still doing it. All right, so you guys will get a little thing that says recording in progress. And let me just confirm that we're live on Facebook. All right, perfect. So Amanda, if you want to just put the Zoom link on the Facebook for anybody who wants to join, and we'll kick things off. Welcome everybody to this very, very special episode of our uh, of of the industry, right? Bounce House Bosses uh, interviews here. This is going to be very special. We're going to be uh, interviewing, talking to somebody who's been in the industry a very, very long time, over 40 years, started out as a party rental business owner, just like most of you guys, and then uh, went on to, to supply and doing a lot. So I'm super, super excited and super humbled to have with me here. Mark Slater uh, from Tent and Table. Hey, Mark, how you doing today, man? Great. Hey, everybody. Nice to meet you. Hope you're all having a great evening. Hey, thanks for taking some time out of your schedule to, you know, come on and, and listen and gather ideas. It's good to be here. Oh, man, it's super, super good to have you, Mark. I mean, we got everybody's eagerly, uh, eagerly patient here to, to listen. Everybody's coming in, waiting to, you know, get, get some of your, hopefully grab a little bit of your wisdom. Um, who the heck are you anyways? Let's start with that. Who are you? Why are you here? And uh, yeah, just tell us a little bit about yourself. Uh, uh, my my company uh, that I started with my partner uh, over 40 years ago is tentandtable.com. We actually started out in the hardware business. You know, we were 18 to 20 years old and, you know, we had a, a dream of being entrepreneurs. Okay. So, you know, at 18, nobody wanted to really you know, give us financing, give us any money. You know, we took our, we, we, we went to local places, a, a small local hardware uh, wholesaler. We stocked our store. We stocked our shelves. We opened up a, our rental department with tools from Sears and Robux. Sears had a warranty, a lifetime warranty. So we went out with our Sears cards and bought rototillers and lawnmowers and power drills and saws and chain saws and we didn't have a mechanic but we rented everything made good roi on it and when it we broke we took it to the sears service center and said we need this repaired free of charge please so you know we just you know we we were creative e even at 18 to 20 years old and and from there we went from a hardware store to rental um, we opened up a couple more rental stores, um, purchased a very large standalone party rental business where um, before I was doing inflatables, you know, I was doing tents, you know, 100 by 300 foot wide, and I could do a sit down wedding for, you know, 1000 or 1200 with the chargers and the linens and the flatware and, and all of that. And, uh, you know, eventually we 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 bought our first bounce house. It was uh, we would go to we were oh, when, when did you buy your first bounce house? What what was the year? Boy, this is important. I need it know. is important, but you know, Kim, do you remember? It was before me, so it had to be more than twenty years ago, right? Oh yeah, it was probably about twenty five years ago. Yeah, and and That's it was ninety one. I'm gonna guess ninety one. Probably ninety one. You know, and it was funny because we had give we gave all our managers discretionary money to to buy stuff at the rental show. Okay, so everybody had five thousand dollars, and somebody bought a, a a trencher, and somebody bought a a mini walk behind edger and this and that. And then this one guy, Tom Rogowski came rolling out to the truck, followed by Frank Skurlock. Okay. Frank. Oh, wow. Or Frank. And he bought a bounce house. $5,000. Okay. In 91, he paid $5,000 for $5,000 $5, for a bounce house. Nobody made bounce houses. Spacewalk made them. There were a couple of people making them out of garages in California. Um, we flipped out, said, go get your money back. What are you doing? Okay. We thought he was absolutely out of his mind. And uh, within, I don't know, probably three or four months, I was scouring the country for anything that would hold air. 
I mean, I was paying four grand for what some people might throw in the garbage now. These guys were just building them in California in their garages. And back then we were getting four or $500 for two or three hours. So we How were- How heavy were they? How much did they weigh? Oh, they were heavy. I mean, a regular 15 by 15 bounce house was 300 and some odd pounds, okay? And there was no real theme to them. There was very little safety involved, but it did- it didn't matter. It, it was new. It was it was something that nobody had seen before. And, you know, we by the end of the summer, I would want to say we probably had five or six units. We would book them out two hour sessions on a Saturday, three or four rentals, same on a Sunday. And from there, we just started growing the inflatable business exponentially. But the thing about it, Five grand for a bounce house. That's crazy. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's that's something. So so at what point did you say, you know, I want to start manufacturing these things instead of just renting them? How did how did that transition happen? Um I mean you you now you now I've bought everything from you guys from way back when we started. You guys, I, I mean there's a lot of great vendors out there, but you guys have such a great variety for startups, for people who are just starting out and people who have been in the business for a while. I mean, I've made the mistake of overbuying from you guys, some really big tents to, to later say, what the heck was I thinking? So you guys really are an essential part of the party mail industry right now. I'm just curious, how how did that happen? I mean, I, somebody today was like, I want to join this interview because I want to learn to do a market. I want to become a supplier. So how did that happen? Was it just like, oh, this is another way to make money, or was it out of a need? No, no, no. I mean, it it it, it was a couple things. Um, a a very very good friend of mine um was the first uh the first manufacturer to leave USA and head overseas. Okay, good friend of mine, Mark Anastasia, who was one of the founding owners of um HEC. Okay, um. He actually, he owned HEC, he owned Leisure, okay? Um, he actually lived overseas um, in mainland China with his wife for close to a decade. And and he just said to me one of these, he said, Mark, he says, you gotta come over here. I'd like love for you to, to see my factory, to see what I do. And um, for our own needs, we found that, you know, we just, there were things that I could um, help give my input in. You know, it, I was in the unique position of being in the rental business. So whatever I would have contract built, I, I knew I could use, okay? You know, I wanted to build games that 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 lasted and overlasted, you mm -hmm. know? Some of the things that we do on our games just developed out of me using them in the rental department on a regular basis okay and then saying okay i want it you know i want these manufacturing techniques used um you know we we we're we're a soup to nuts company i mean if you look at our listings you know i might not have all of the gold shivari chairs okay or sparkly linens that we sell but i think we sell you know the backbone of what anybody really needs in their rental business whether they're starting company or they're an established company you know um the bouncers the water slides the tents the tables the chairs they're they're truly the mainstay and you know I think it's a little different because most of most of the people on here right now and a lot of the people that we meet at IAPA started out in the, the inflatable business. And they always have, a lot of them have this stigma that I don't want to do tents. I don't want to do tables. They're a pain. They're heavy. Tariq, I think, I think there was a time you called me once and said, Mark, I don't want to do these. These tents are a pain. What did you get me into? Do you remember that call a few years ago? Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. I think I think I, I think I went too big. We just are. It's interestingly, our guys said, "Hey, how can we stop doing tents at the end of last year?" I'm like, "You guys want to do tents?" They're like, "Yeah, not those really big ones, but do those twenty by twenties. We love those." So we brought some of those back, and it's just been a lot of fun. Yeah, um, but I, I want to touch up. So, so you start. That's really interesting. So you you and you've been to China. You've been to like these these places over there. Um, I think one of the things that probably sets me aside from a lot of you know, a lot of people and, and, you know, if you, we're all on Facebook, we all read these forums, you know, uh, Man, I, you think, I'm buying from China. It's cheaper. I'm, I'm buying from China. It's yeah. cheaper. Ooh, I want to buy from Omega. Okay. I, I, prior to COVID, I was spending an average of three months a year overseas. Oh, um, we have a a full time manager overseas, Jane. Um, Jane Jane was at the show. You might have might have met her. Or she's always in our booth at IAPA. Um, she's an expert in the inflatable industry. Um, again, she she worked with you know other companies you know long before I even traveled to China, and that was ten years ago. And, you know, I've got feet on the ground there. I have somebody that is taking care of my day to day. You know, uh, I see a lot of people out there that figure since they're going to throw a half a dozen games in a container, um, they're an importer. OK, you know, it, it, the savings sometimes can be minimal um, from my scale. It's a little bit different because um, I want to be in a. I want to be a Western American rental person, um, an entrepreneur who has, you know, my hands on what's going on. I want to be over there, um, bouncing in the units, sliding down the slides, kicking the tires. And if I'm not there, I have somebody doing it. So, I, I mean, so that, I guess let me ask you this more directly: unique. What's what, what's the worst that can happen? Because, you know, like we, we all get these messages, right? Everybody here. Hey, they're going to send you the exact unit that Tent and Table makes or somebody else makes and show you this crazy low price. What's the worst that's going to happen if I say, sure, yes, I'll buy it from China? Um, number one, you're dealing with a you're dealing with a country that just because we have lead rules and chemical rules here in the USA. OK. Don't think for one moment that to save a little bit, they may not be using substandard materials. Oh, I use, they use Plato material. It's the best in the industry. You know, I spend thousands of dollars a year on random testing of the materials that I use, my internal material. I need to make sure that, you know, because, because we're selling products on other um, platforms like, you know, Amazon or Walmart, okay, very, very, very strict, expensive mm -hmm. tests and regulations. I mean, I have to make sure, even stronger than what you might see in the ASTM standards, okay, I have to have a plethora of tests done on my vinyls, on my internals, on my threads, um, different fire ratings that you can't always believe from a piece of paper. It's hard. You can, you know, I could sit there and, and say the disadvantages and there's always going to be some people that have had a good experience with it. But, you know, is, I would say, personally, I think the number one reason to buy from a USA-based company, okay, whether they're manufacturing in the USA, whether they're using a, a company in outsourcing and contract building is insurance, okay? At the end of the day, I have manufacturer's liability insurance, okay? Um, it's never a big thing until you need it, okay? And unfortunately, 40 years in the rental business, <clears throat> I've had to you know, utilize my insurance, okay? Because there's, you know, we, we haven't we haven't funded every billboard injury attorney in the world, okay, 
they they will go after and they'll expose your weaknesses. And you know, you might not think that the liability insurance is an important part of your business operation, but if, if you're buying, if you're buying directly from overseas, the chances of that company having serviceable insurance in the United States is almost zero. And you know what? It's not worth your house. It's not worth your livelihood, okay? Because you know the attorneys I'm talking about. They're on every freeway, on every billboard, at every exit. They're on the TV 10 times an evening when you're watching something. In, our, in Buffalo, New York, it's Salino and Barnes. In your city, it's somebody else. But, you know, they're they're there. And, and, and for the... For the, the the little amount of money that you pay to deal with a company that's USA based, okay, that has manufacturer's liability insurance, is taking the time to make sure that the products that are being used to construct the inflatables are chemical free and lead free, that they're meeting ASTM standards, okay, to me is really a small investment when you're looking at how much more you're paying versus what you might be renting that unit out for and the amount of ROI it's gonna get you over the next you know, few months or years or three or four years you're using it. Is, it, is the savings, so let's talk about that. Like, what is the savings really like? Because after you consider the, you know, the, 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 the shipping fees and all that, so if, if it's a $3,000 unit or $2,000 unit and these guys have it listed at how much, how, how much, What's the savings really like? I mean, what are you, are you saving like seventy five percent by by buying from China by the time it gets to your? No, you're probably you might be you might be saving twenty or twenty five percent. You might. It it, it all depends. Really? You know, okay. I mean, you know the 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 prices you receive in the email are not are not including duties, destination fees, port charges, demurrage. Um, it, it, brokerage fees, okay? There's another dozen fees that are added on to every shipment that I bring in. You know, I had an inspection the other day on one of my containers. $3,500, boom. So it, it's random, okay? It's, it's a raffle. My name gets pulled out of a bucket and the U.S. government is... Maybe they only open the door, but they're still charging me three to four thousand dollars because it's a revenue stream for them. You know, um, a lot of times when you're ordering one or two or three inflatables at a time, it's coming over LCL, which is less than container load. So, you know, we have a it, I have a hard enough time getting USA shipping companies to move a pallet from Buffalo, New York to Atlanta, Georgia without damaging it, much less some company moving it from Guangzhou, China, okay, to the port of LA, then on a train to the port of New York and then New York to another place. So the risk of damage is there. And that's, you know, you're never gonna get your, your money out of that. And I don't understand what would drive somebody to wire a 50% deposit halfway around the world to somebody that they've never met and only spoke to on Skype, okay? It's like one of those emails I get that my great uncle in Nigeria has died <laughs> and somebody's got $8 million in a bank account for me. Uh, uh, I'm so, gonna add one yeah. more thing, because I, I, I did buy it from China, actually. I didn't get my stuff, and you're right. The savings wasn't crazy, but one thing you didn't mention, Mark, is what I learned, I got a water slide, really big slide, loved it. What I learned the hard way is it took like six guys to roll that thing up when it was wet. It holds water. And these are the things you take for granted when you when you work from a company like Tent and Table that, that has experience and knows this stuff. The, the amount of payroll that I have to put in and then the Velcro started tearing off. We started getting people sending us pictures of their kids getting ripped up from the Velcro. And this happened oh, over years. It didn't happen. That is so, that, yeah, I know. I, yeah, I, and, and those things, I ended up selling, getting rid of it. So, I mean, for like next to nothing. And I'm, yes, I made money. Yes, I saved money. But 
you know, as I grow, I definitely don't want to be associated with something like that. And the labor costs and, and all that, I'm, I learned my lesson from experience. So I think that's just, just another point, especially with water units. They don't have the experience that we have here uh, with building them. I know that firsthand. Well, I think the other thing, too, is, you know, there's, you know, up until a few years ago, um, the ASTM laws, okay, were four or five pages. There was not a lot of emphasis on safety in the inflatable industry. And, you know, since the ASTM laws were rewritten, you know, now you've got about 30 different uh, pages of, of details. And though there's probably a lot of people here from a lot of states that are not yet following the ASTM guidelines, you know, it's only a matter of time because, you know, New York doesn't follow it, okay, but we get taxed any way you can anyway. But, you know, Pennsylvania, New Jersey, okay, Ohio, um, Ontario now is following the ASTM standards. So you also don't ever want to be in a position why, where you're buying games that may not pass regulations OK, for the state that you're in, because, you know, maybe it's about safety in the industry. Maybe it's about a state grabbing additional um, revenue by doing inspections and having to have licensing and this and that. OK, um, maybe it's probably the latter because our states want money, but you don't want to be in a position where you have substandard inflatables in your inventory that may not pass an inspection, okay? What, what are you gonna do with them? You're muted. I muted myself, had some background noise. Uh, no, you're absolutely right. And, and some people are wondering what the heck is ASTM standards? What, what does that even mean? And we could go on and on about that. I think we can, uh, if anybody has questions about that comment or something, maybe we can uh, send some information your way. But uh, I want to shift gears a little bit to something you mentioned earlier. A few years ago, I called Mark and uh, I was like, listen, I have some money. I don't know what what to buy. And, and I was on the website and I, I was I'm on the Tent and Table website and I see all these really, really nice uh, inflatables on Facebook. And at the time I was spending a lot of money with Tent and Table and still am. Uh, but you guys, your financing just makes it like a no brainer. So that made it really easy for me to grow. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, the zero percent thing. You got, I don't know if you guys still do that or only do that around the app, but that really allowed us to grow without necessarily having to go through, uh, you know, financing with a bunch of banks. But Mark told me something. You probably have no recollection of this, but I still remember. And I was looking for something like the stuff that I was seeing with all the designs and all that stuff. And Mark, you said to me, you're like, Tariq, the stuff that rents is the stuff that's just boy, girl, gender neutral. Don't overthink it. You don't want the stuff that's too heavy with all the designs. You want the stuff that's going to be just go with every party, not the super, uh, you know, the next Disney movie thing that's going to go out of style in a few years or the design that's only for this specific kind of party. Um, so I want to just t tell me a little bit about that. And and because it, it seems like the more I'm on your site and the more we've been, put, you know, promoting you guys and, and doing this, this partnership that we did with you guys, I'm noticing that it's kind of part of your culture to really create products that. I, I feel like you guys really put a lot of thought into not just what's trending, but what's going to make people money and give them an insane ROI. Uh, I mean, you, the ROI for, for your stuff is really good. So can you tell me a little bit about if everybody here is interested in what, what inventory should I buy next? If I had 10 grand, what should I buy? Give us some of your tips. You've worked with tons of business owners. Sure. What are your tips about what, what items to buy and what items do you see rent across the country? Well, I think, I think what you're saying about being gender, gender neutral is great. I mean, um, rainbow colors, neutral colors, some marbles, um, things that two people can move around. You don't need them to be huge and elaborate. Um, you know, not everybody is into surfing. Not everybody is into tiki, but you can get just as nice of a slide when you put some marble colors on it, put some palm trees on it. Um, our, some of our most popular rental items are... Um, and I think there's somebody on this call right now that's picking one up tomorrow, a rainbow mega castle, okay? Most of the items that I sell, I end up having people coming back and buying multiples of them because they're just such a mainstay item, okay? Now, that's not to say you don't have to have something pink and purple, okay, for the girls, okay? 
But generally speaking, I we have never, even in our rental department, pigeonholed ourselves into something that was truly age specific or themed to a point where, you know, I mean, I remember when Ninja Jump was selling out, he couldn't sell Wally -E bounce houses if his life depended on it. Okay. I like that movie too. It, it and the other thing too, I mean, for for those of you that are not doing tents, okay, you know, tents, tables, and chairs, you're already at the house, okay? You've loaded up your truck, you pulled up to the house, okay, to not double your average ticket on a job and offer tents, tables, and chairs is it's just it's not a in my eyes, it's not a great business move. You're already there. Your your labor's at the house. You've spent the gas. You've driven the mileage. How many times have you pulled into somebody's house where you're setting up a bounce house or a slide or a combo and there's a tent, table, and chairs in the house already? Okay. You're doubling your average ticket. It's just, I, I can't stress enough that 20 by 20 high peak tent at you know, $300 to $400, okay, and shares at $2 a piece and tables at $10 a piece, okay, before you know it, you know, you've now turned that into a very easy $1,000, $1,200 ticket, okay, and it's not really costed, it's not costing more. I will say the one thing is, you sometimes have to pivot how you're delivering things because, you know, in the inflatable industry, you're dropping off your inflatables on a Saturday morning and you're picking up on a Sunday morning to get them out on the rental for Sunday and then maybe picking them up on Monday. You know, the lady of the house expects, expects the tent the day before, okay? Yeah. So get the tent out there on a, Saturday, uh, on a Friday, okay? Who cares if you drop the inflatable off at the same time? So the kids are going to be using it for a couple hours that evening. Here, here, here's one more interesting thing. When it's raining on those, you know, when, when you book stuff out a month before and then the weekend comes and it's raining, all the inflatable people call to cancel. This is something I learned. This is part of the reason we brought tents back. All the inflatable cu uh, customers call to cancel and then a bunch of other people start calling for tents. So it's yeah. really cool how it complements each other where when it's raining, people want more tents. So it's really cool because you can make up that money. Like Mark said, it literally is double your average sale yeah. for the tents. And tents are for shade. Okay. It's not only for rain. So, you know, and, and again, what was, I mean, fun food machines were incredibly, are in, still incredibly popular in our rental departments. Okay. You know, gold medal, um, creators, you know, quality products, safe products. That's another thing you got to be careful of. You know, the the Amazon snow cone machines, the Amazon cotton candy machines, they're not safe. You know, there's a lot of sharp edges. They're, they're hot. The snow cone machines don't have good safety switches. So I'm also saying if you're ever getting into that fun food arena, spend the money on gold medal or creators, okay? Something that is USA made, UL listed, and safe to use for the kids. But again, now I've just taken my tent and table rental and I've thrown on a cotton candy and a snow cone machine with supplies, all right? And now I've just bumped that rental up to an, another couple hundred dollars. So. You know, it's it's all those, it's like anything else. Add on as much as you can to the location that you're going to because once once you've left your shop and you're in that truck, it's not costing you any more money to go to that customer's house. So you might as well um, maximize that, that average ticket as, as much as you can. 100%. I did a video the other day, uh last Thursday where I showed you how to set up a 20 by 20 high peak frame tent. It was windy. So I did it in my warehouse. It took like less than 30 minutes. We have a little bit of experience. Might take you like 45, 
Uh, but Mark, you guys have a great video on your on your on your uh, YouTube channel. I'm gonna remake that video, make it a little bit uh, cleaner. We're gonna do one outside. But um, yeah, it's it's and it, and the tent right now, anyways. If you're watching this live, costs less than a for what you guys are selling. I don't know why why it's it's gone down, but a 20 by 20 high peak frame tent costs less than a bounce house combo uh, right now. And you you uh you make you make more, and and you're absolutely right. It's not. I think for me, I, I I went on a rant before where I'm like, I'm not doing tents anymore and all that. And I think it's because I got one tent from Tent and Table and it did so well. And here's too ambitious. We got the calls. Hey, can you do a 40 by 80 for us? I'm like, Mark, you got some 40 by 80s? I bought four 20 by 40s, put them together, made a 40 by 80. Huge mistake. Should have passed that job on to somebody that's that's bigger. And now we were doing these huge jobs at festivals and we just weren't prepared. We had these high school kids working there. Didn't tension the tents right. Customer calls us the next day. Hey, your tent collapsed from the rain. It was terrible. I'm like, I'm never doing it again. So my advice, start with just a 20 by 20. Don't be, pass up. You're going to get, once you offer a 20 by 20 tent for 50 people, you're going to get those calls for bigger tents. And your inner entrepreneur is going to tell you to call Mark up and go bigger, bigger, bigger. Pass it to somebody with experience because tents are more of a liability. I don't know what your input is on that, Mark, but that's that was my experience, and that's why I swore off tents for a while. I think I just went too big too fast. Uh, you know what? I I um <clears throat> I hopped on that roller coaster thirty years ago. Okay, <laughs> we bought a uh, successful party rental business, and that's what I was saying. I mean, I I could do a tent the size of a football field. 100 by 300, okay? And I could do a mobile kitchen. I had, you know, tow behind generators and chandeliers, and I had ovens, and I had refrigerators, and I had headaches like you wouldn't believe. That's to what I was going to say, boss. What is the yeah. cost? What was the cost? What was the equipment? What was the labor required to do all of that? Too much. It was too much. It, it actually, because once you once you enter the wedding business and you're really starting to go after the, you know, uh, uh, the upscale wedding business, it's a very emotional business. You're dealing with emotions. You're dealing with a lot of people, a ton of moving parts. You're on call from the moment that wedding starts till two or two o'clock in the morning till the last guest leaves. You know, because they've blown a breaker on the generator and the tents in darkness, and I'm out there fudging around with it while I would rather be sleeping. I I went I I downsized. I went back to that um, backyard party, commercial, small commercial jobs, schools, small festivals. Okay, you know. I mean, that's, we still do a bit, you know, we'll do the taste of Buffalo. Which, which is not small. It's not so, small. But yeah. it's, it's smaller tents. It's, it's 15 by 15s to 20 by 40s. It's a manageable size tent. And I actually enjoyed, I enjoyed it more when I got out of the, the glitzy wedding end of it and went back to the roots where we started. And that was delivering backyard fun, you know, you know, smaller parties. Okay. School events, um, you know, mid-size events, something where there was not enough moving parts to drive me crazy. And our best renting tents now are probably the 20 by 20, 20 by 30, 20 by 40 size tent because, you know, I can sit there in a 15 foot box truck. I can put two guys in that truck and I can put five or six jobs on that. And that's the route for the day. You know, here's your list. Here's your maps. Okay. You know, I, I know what, how much time it's going to be at each event by just, you know, rule of thumb of what it cost me, okay? And I calculate how much that truck is making, okay? Five or six jobs, okay? Boom, their eight or 10 hour day is done. That truck comes back, they're parked, you know? And by then I've got the, the next day's jobs going. And 
And when I was doing the big, big events, you know, I don't know that I was just because the heyday was bigger. I don't think it was as easy because now I had to have five or six guys out at a big job setting up a 40 by 100 tent, doing all the tables, doing all the chairs, hanging lighting. OK, so I had five guys out at one job for a day when I was making more money and it was more profitable. I have two guys in three or four trucks. OK, you know, doing 15 smaller jobs. 100 percent. And, and I think you mentioned something earlier that I think we take for granted when we do tents. You get to set up the day before. Yep. If there's any issues like I had, I had one last last week or the weekend before. It was like almost a thousand dollar job and the lady was pissed because one of the tables she's like I spent a lot of money and I still had the text and the table was broken or something like that no big deal I had her another table I had like 12 hours to get her a whole nother table no rush I did it the next day no big deal with a bounce house you know you, you have you set it up that day you have any issues there goes your whole Saturday so it's it's really a cool thing to set up the day or before uh, or even sometimes we do two days before like if, if it's a Sunday event we might still set yeah. up on Friday or Thursday no big deal and yeah, the customer really yeah, appreciate it. exactly I'll yeah, set so on Thursday and Fridays, and a lot of times I'll take down on a Monday or Tuesday. Yep, you know, makes it makes it a lot easier to manage. And 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 yes, I a lot of people on like Facebook like to say I'd rather do one five thousand dollar event than than ten five hundred dollar events. COVID taught us that you that's not necessarily true because first of all, if you lose that one client, then you've lost five grand a year. And also, every one of those smaller events that you do might send you another one or two referrals, right? We get those all the time. When you set up a tent, wow, I did not know it was going to look like that. Where'd you rent that from? Can I have your card? And then you have another couple parties and you get more reviews. So, uh, so yeah, 100%, I think. And a lot of us here are just, I don't, I don't, you know, everybody's kind of starting small, but definitely we are getting into tents on, on the starting side here is definitely a, a, um, a good side to be on. You know, and, 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 you know, it's, 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 it's been my life. So like, even, you know, you might, you might look at, well, what's the difference between my tent and table high peak tent and what you see bouncing angels or moonwalk USA selling? Well, again, I've, I've developed my own fabric. Okay. You know, I have the, I have a proprietary coated fabric that I use on my tent tops that is unlike anybody else's in the industry. It does not develop pinholes easily. Um, it is incredibly flexible. It's very durable. You know, I kind of, again, overbuilt it because it's what I like to use on my own rental fleet. And, you know, because of my, you know, ha having, having a overseas influence and, and having the connections that I have and some of the vendors that I've been dealing with for over a decade, I have the ability to say, here's my specific specs, you know, so on and so forth. Uh, what, how many tables and chairs fit under a 20 by 20 10? A good rule of thumb, 10 square foot per person, okay? One 10 by 10 area, one 10 by 10 quadrant is going to fit one five foot round, one eight foot table. So you're about eight to 10 people per 10 foot by 10 foot area. So I, I'll always tell people, you know, a 20 by 20 tent could seat up to 40 people. But, you know, for a for a bit, you know, if I've got a customer on the line and she's asking me a recommendation, she says, I'm going to have 40 people at my house or even 50 people, a 20 by 20 tent is probably all she needs because you're going to have 20 people to 20 or 25 people underneath that tent at any given time watching the kids in the bounce house. Okay. And the other 20 people are going to be inside in the air conditioning. The aunts, the uncles, you know, some of the older people, they're all inside. The younger people are outside. You know, everybody's going to come out and eat, but not everybody's seating at the same time. So, you know, 20 by 20, my my number one most popular size tent. And I have a lot of customers that'll buy two 20 by 20 high peaks, put a gutter down it and use that as a 20 by 40 because 
you know, with the gutter, um, you know, now you've got good seating for about 80 people. Yes, yeah, so that's that's another reason I went with. And not all tents are created equal. I made the mistake of getting a pole tent when we started. It was like, a, I think it was called a weekender tent. I just got the cheapest tent you guys had. Big mistake. First of all, I didn't know how to set it up. But other than that, what's really cool about the high peak tents that, that they offer is you can connect them together to make them bigger. Uh, so that that was really cool, especially for a smaller company. Um, <laughs> Robert says, now I need to buy tents. Uh, yes, you really should. And I think right now with the sale that they got going on, ends Friday. Uh, so for uh, at least for event hawk members, I think it's definitely a great time to get in. You got a couple prospects here. Uh, try it. Just one twenty by twenty. And here's the best part: tents to me are like a Toyota Camry. You put them up for sale, everybody wants to buy them, especially the twenty by twenties. Their resale value is great. I mean, you you know, everybody's always people still reach out to me and ask to buy tents. Um, so those are those are great. I want to go back to a quick question here: How long does one of your tents last? What's the lifespan of a tent? Uh, some they're asking specifically about tent cables. But uh, overall, if you want to answer that question. The cable tent, I mean, there's two different types of tent material. Like the weekender tents that we sell are translucent material. Light will come through them. Um, if they pick up a stain on the outside of the tent, you know, it might get magnified when you look up at it, okay? So, you know, three or four years out of a weekender. Um, one of our premium tents, like the high peak, the block out tent material, if you take care of that top, that top could should last you three, four, five, six, seven years. I mean, again, we all know the term to tarp or not to tarp in the inflatable industry. It's the same with your tents, you know, you know, set, you know, get a ground cover, set it up on a ground cover, okay. Um, maintain a good clean tent top, that tent's going to last you for years. I mean, uh, probably longer than most bounce houses or combos, you know, just because if they're clean and they're set up with a tarp, there's really nothing that's going to destroy that top. I think, yeah, and the tarp, and I wish, no, I'm going to just for, for the sales team at Tent Table, they did not tell me about the tarp when I bought it, probably because, again, I was just overly ambitious. And my first batch of tents, yes, they get really dirty. And they're white, and that's what a lot of people are worried about. But now that we use tarps, Tent Table offers a special tarp. It's uh, called, I think, a drop cloth or something like that. It's 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 like a special material. We we use two of them on every single tent. They're, they stay very, very clean. And what, what I wish I knew back then is the inside of the tent is more important than the outside of the tent. Absolutely. So we roll them up. We always keep that because people are looking up. Uh, so these are the things that I'm, I'm, I've been making videos sharing all this info. But yes, if you keep them clean, which is not hard, even when it's raining, by using those those tarps, uh, they, they'll last for a long time. But, you, you know, Trick, like you said, though, you know, when you're done with that tent, there's a church in your area that's going to buy that tent. You mm -hmm. know, that investment into and in, in you know, I see a lot of, I see a lot of people asking about the lifestyle tile chairs as opposed to <laughs> our standard folding chair. The the I'll call it the Samsonite style chair in the industry that stacks fifty in a stack. They're, you know, depending on quantity, probably eleven to twelve, thirteen dollars a piece. You use that chair for four or five years, it starts getting scratches on it. You pay 10, 12 bucks for that chair. You're selling it for six or seven or eight. Okay. It it's your your resale value on the tens tables and chairs is always greater than an inflatable. 100%. What about cleaning? This is a question. I think you guys made a post about this today. How do you how do you clean a tent top? Um, best, best you know, down, down, on, down on the ground on a tarp the same way you're cleaning your bounce house I mean I'll use if it's if it's really dirty um, we sell a vinyl cleaner um, we sell mildew cleaners so you're just basically scrubbing it and letting it dry no different than cleaning anything made of vinyl but you know you're, you're again if you're using a ground cover you know, you may only be cleaning that top once every couple of years. Mm, yes. Yeah, it does. It does work. We, we, yeah, 100%. Is there, um, 
I get texts from you guys all the time. Just real quick, this is important because people are going to laugh at me, but I just, I got a text from you guys last week and I bought two, two inflatables. Uh, I, I love your rental light stuff. I love when people tell me stuff's too expensive. I, I have a cheaper option that's just rental light. We'll deliver. It takes 15 minutes to set up. Uh, before I forget, is there a way for people to opt into your text messages? I highly recommend everybody gets the text messages from Tent and Table. They not only send deals, they send like, from, I, I love them. I sometimes like, I don't look, but I'll never unsubscribe because. Uh, give, me 30, give me 30 seconds, Drake, and I will drop yeah. it in the chat. Give us, give us a number to text in or something. Yeah, uh, I, I will give you the option. And, and Tariq, you just brought up the rental lights too, you know. <clears throat> number one, if nobody on here has ever bought one of our water slides, our water slides are great, okay? I seal the seams, you know, I design my water slides for the rental industry, okay? They do not have water. The water does not get inside them. Um, I seal all my seams underneath the slide liner. Um, makes for a firmer unit. It, it makes for a longer lasting unit because you're not getting all the dirt and grit and sand inside the seams. Um, the floors are inflated. It's not a full pool. We hope to be doing a few full pool units in the future, but you know, just overall, the amount of workmanship that goes into sealing the seams to make sure there's no water going in that is huge. But you were saying about the rental light units. Um, 125 pounds. Yeah, and, and it's funny, I never, I never built the rental lights or the crossovers to be a rental product. Um, but I, when I built them, COVID hit, and all we had to put in our rental stores was to cross over the rental light units. You know, I, I figured they were going to be for somebody who had rented for years and finally wanted to buy a bounce house. Well, we found that that 125 pound bounce house, okay, last two or three years, I have very, very few issues with them. The base is still built out of a 15 ounce material. The internal baffling is the same. We're using a 10 ounce material on the uppers and they work fine. And they're nice and light and easy to move around. They, they've been hugely successful, not only from a price standpoint, but for the operator who's just starting out and doesn't have um, two people to send out on a job all the time, you know, all I mean, sides. You got, you got some of these now, for, for, yeah. for $7.99. I mean, it's insane. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's, you know, we have bouncers, we have combos, we have 12 foot, and we have 15 foot slides. Now, the rental lights do have a full pool, and, uh, you know, Knock on wood, okay, I built them the same way I built the commercial units by by sealing the seams, using the using the welded strips on any of the sewing areas. <clears throat> so they've been spectacular from a warranty standpoint. Is it just um, a thinner, just a thinner material then? Thinner material, um, lighter materials where the lighter material, you know. It, it, at the end of the day, you're bouncing on the bounce house itself, okay? That's really all that needs to be a 15-ounce material, okay? Your pillars and uprights, though they're still a coated PVC, you're not really bouncing on those. So, so that's where I was able to shave some weight as what well, using the same netting, the same thread, and the same workmanship as a full commercial 15-ounce vinyl, okay? as opposed to, you know, lightening up on the upper areas. And again, we use a 15 ounce vinyl. Um, some people have heard 18 ounce vinyl, you know, a, a quick vinyl lesson, you know, the weight of the vinyl has nothing to do with the strength of the unit that you're gonna buy. So if somebody's saying 18 ounce is better than 15 ounce, um, it's not, you know, you're, 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 Strength is coming from your base fabric, okay? If you've ever gone out and bought sheets, the higher the denier, the higher the thread count, um, the more expensive the sheets are going to be. It's the same with a vinyl. 
if you're using a good thousand by thousand or twelve hundred by twelve hundred weave, okay, um, you you know it's the same base fabric on an eighteen ounce or a fifteen ounce material. It just depends on how they're coating the material. So eighteen ounce has you know, 80% of the coating on the top and 20% of the coating on the bottom, you're never touching the bottom of the vinyl, okay? You take a 15 ounce material, it's got the exact same amount of vinyl on the top, it's only got 10% underneath. So it's never a wear area. You know, if you feel the top of 15 or 18 ounce vinyl, it's identical, flip it upside down, that's where you're going to notice a little bit of difference. They're not using as much vinyl on the inside where the baffles would be. You're never touching that. And by doing that, you're taking, even in a commercial unit, shaving 30, 40, 50 pounds off of a, a combo or a slide. So Trey talks about that a lot, boss, in his, um, when Trey talks about the obstacle courses. And, and Trey, you can chime in about the weight, though. It's it's just as good. It's just as strong, but you can have a smaller team set it up. Yeah. Um, and he, he did some videos on that. Yeah. It did. And that's, you know, for years, it was always, you got to have 18 ounce. You got to have 18 ounce. Now, when, when we developed the 15 ounce vinyl, you know, um, I did that with, you know, a couple others in the industry. We just wanted to come up with something that was, was lighter, you know, um, it turned out to be very successful. And you're not compromising any strength by going from 18 ounce down to 15 ounce. I'll tell you my number one thing that I look at when I'm purchasing inflatables is the weight. A lot of people will disagree. They look at the design. I'm thinking everybody knows, any business owner knows that the number one cost in any business is payroll. You got to send two guys out. That's one thing. Once you got to send three, four, because it's bigger. Um, even, I mean, I know some people have electric dollies, but for me, it's the weight. And when I see I can get something for, you know, for under a thousand bucks, that's 125 units, 125 dollars, or sorry, 125 pounds. I'll take it. I'll I'll rent it for whatever. I'm gonna be in and out in 15 minutes. Somebody can maybe pick it up depending on where you're at. Uh, weight is very to me for scalable. As you want to scale your business, those really really heavy units, it just doesn't. It's all about like Mark said. Like when you send out the truck, you know how long it's gonna be out, how much money that truck is making you. Same thing. I know that I'm gonna be at a customer's house less than 30 minutes in and out, considering cleaning all that. Um, you know, and to everyone on here, you know, what I'm saying as, you, as your business grows and you're looking for different things to get into, like I said, look outside of the box. Don't don't be pigeonholed into just doing inflatables because you think another aspect of the business is going to be uh, more difficult. Give it a shot because that that's <clears throat> me coming from the other end. I went from tents two inflatables. Um, a lot of these, a lot of you guys are probably inflatables thinking about what else you could do. Um, diver diversify. I, I hear, you know, the, the worst thing, the worst thing that can happen is, you know, well, you're just really, you're going to change your setup schedule a little bit, but once you start offering it, you're going to find you're diversifying your customers as well. Um, you know, frame tents for auto dealerships and commercial customers. Those commercial customers also know you're doing inflatables. They're going to be bringing that stuff to their homes as well. Um, you know, try to, you know, try to go with, grow within your comfort zone, but always maximize how much you can put on your average ticket. Wise words, wise words. Um, question here about rental light. Uh, I think Mark already answered this. They don't last as long as, and it's not that they don't last. It's just that, you know, you're going to have probably, you're going to have to do some repairs or whatever might get beat up. Uh, but yeah, they're not, obviously they're, they're lighter. They might uh, show some wear faster than some of the other units, right, Mark? Um, yeah, and no, then the weight limit. They, the weight they, limit they may well. show wear faster than some of the other units. But, but, but again, you know, it's all about ROI. OK, you know, when I started out in the rental industry, you know, you use something until it had no value anymore. You know, I mean, 30, 40 years ago, you would rent a chair and you'd 
repaint the chair every winter, okay? And, you know, you'd sand your tables and redo them and do this and do that. You know, then I got to a point where I said, you know, I just, I want to work smarter. I want to, you know, buy my chairs, okay? And then, you know, sell my chairs off while they still have 80% of that value, okay? Um, same with my tents, okay? Um, that inflatable, you know, crossover that's seven ninety nine, dollars okay? If that thing's paid for itself in June and you get the rest of the summer out of it and next summer out of it, who cares if it didn't last as long as the um, commercial unit? It doesn't owe you anything. You could cut it up and wheel it to the trash, okay, if you didn't want to sell it within your competitive market. But at the same time, it might be a unit that if you were short staff, one person could go out and set that thing up and you're not worrying about hurting your back or injuring somebody or this or that. They've been a, they've been a great rental unit for us. And one thing we do in our, our rental businesses that some people do not is we do allow customer pickups. So you have to be equipped to do something like that. But um, we have, you know, at any of our rental stores, you know, 20, 30, 40 bounce houses per rental store are being loaded into somebody's vehicle on a Saturday morning, okay? Um, one, one set price for Saturday keep it for the whole weekend for uh, uh, like one and a half times the daily rental, you know, pick it up on a Friday, drop it off on a Monday. So if I was getting $150 to $200 for a weekend rental on that $7.99 bounce house, and I was putting in the trunk of a car and unloading it from the trunk of the car. Okay. And, and, that bounce house has generated me $800 in June and $800 in July and $800 in September. And I get two or three years out of it. What's my labor cost into that unit? It's minimal. Okay. So if it doesn't last as long as the commercial one, <clears throat> that's fine. But Mrs. Jones is happy to pick it up because she can, muscle it around herself her and one of her kids can help set it up okay and boom back and in the they don't want to pay they don't want to pay for for three four hundred dollars for no. the bigger combo nope. so we're like oh and that's that's why i love these it's not that i'm not saying all your inventory should be these but like no. marks to diversify so when somebody says oh that's too expensive no problem we have something under two hundred dollars boom so yep. you never have to turn anybody away and that's that's why i like to have these in inventory yep. Well, I know we're at time. Um, yep. Let's let's take a quick picture. Everybody turn your cameras on. I like to do this here. Turn your cameras on if you want to be in the picture. We'll take a quick picture, and then we'll hear from Tent and Table how you guys can reach out to them. They have a special sale going on right now. Uh, they've been an awesome partner with, with Event Hawk. We love working with them. I love buying from them. Everybody, come on. Turn your pictures on. Come on, Colleen, Amanda, Ben's, Jackie's phone. Turn picture on Jackie's phone. Gary, Kelly, Mo, calling you guys out. Melissa, come on, Charles. All right, we're taking a picture on three. Ready? Two more seconds. One, two, three. Woo! All right, got the picture. Thank you, guys, everybody. Uh, Mark and the team. How can uh, how can we get a hold of you guys? If anybody, I, I find the easiest way is you know go to our site, click on chat. Someone is going to respond promptly. Okay, um, our numbers on our site. You know we are we are answering you know basically all day long almost every day of the week but surprisingly even on chat kim what time's chat open till 8 p.m yeah so but we answer know. after like we were answering all weekend on the holiday weekend yeah yeah, yeah. jack and the jackie is in the chat right here we just dropped the phone number we've got jackie mentioned whatsapp we have <clears throat> social media but yeah like mark said the, the website or i just dropped the phone number just call the phone number really that's the easiest we text the number 
I like the text. No, but you know what, Trey? I will, I will see you on that because the number that I dropped earlier, you can subscribe to two texts and potentially we can enable two way texting. So we will, we you will can, see you on that. You can message on Facebook and WhatsApp. A lot of people do that because I prefer texting to messaging. And Jackie uh, did just, yeah, Jackie did just drop the WhatsApp um text in the chat. We'll get you guys an event hawk number to be texting all. You'll be event hawking all weekend. There you go. And definitely, guys, we're doing the 10% off um, all regularly priced items for Event Hawk folks. If for some reason the you're trying to use the coupon code and it doesn't work, um, call the number, chat the number, text the WhatsApp. We'll take care of you. Yep. It goes through Friday, so hit them up before then. Any any final uh, any final thoughts? Anybody, Mark? Anybody on Event Hawk team? This has been really, really great. Thank you guys very much. Any closing thoughts? Okay. If you want to do this again, just let me know if, if anybody wants to, you know, send in any information on subjects or discussions, uh, feel free to reach out. You know, as everyone can see, I have a gift of gab and I could talk all day. So. <laughs> Mark, I will actually take you up on that. I would like if you could, I don't know, I, I've looked at ASTM once and I just got confused and I threw it away. If you have any simple doc, anything simple that I can read and maybe make a video on or, or the rest of us can maybe look through Three, about Don't you know Lance? Do you know Lance? I don't know Lance. Mark, do we still I have can, Lance? I, I, will, I will say, oh. you hear a lot about the ASTM. Um, the crazy thing is ASTM report is not free, okay? Um, so it's not something that I could share. You know, the report's about, I think, 70 or $80, but... I'd be more than happy to come on sometime and and give some tips on to what's in the ASTM, why and how it was written, um, you know, from the staking and the entrapment and some of the safety issues that were addressed in it. Because all in all, it, it's it's the ASTM is a recommended standards. Some states have written that in the law already but generally speaking it's it's really about the you know the safety and the well-being of the children that are using our games and it was well thought out from you know landing pads how you can stand the heights of the walls areas of entrapment the size of the netting holes um staking and so on and so forth so I, I would I would go over some, you know, ASTM questions and answers if you ever wanted to do okay. that. Yeah, I'll definitely take you up on that because I hear sometimes stakes like what size the stakes should be and things like that, and I'm just like I, I just use whatever comes with them. Right? I know, I know. Uh, That's one of the less I feel like less conclusive things. Like the netting and stuff is obvious, the maps are obvious, the stakes. Some people still want to debate. Okay. Well, as long as it's up for debate, I just don't want us, anybody to be well, doing it. It's not up for debate. It's not up for debate to ASTM, but. They say, okay. All right. That's it. All right. We'll leave it there just in case they're listening. Yep. Well, thank you guys. This has been a lot of fun, really. Tent and Table team, you guys are awesome. Um, for anybody who wants to meet them in person, uh, what's the next show that you guys are going to be on? IAPA? November? IAPA. IAPA, yep. Next yep. one's in Florida. We'll be there as well. Uh, Orlando, Florida. If you guys don't know what IAPA is, where have you been? Uh, but no, seriously, shoot us a comment or a message. We'll, we'll send you some information on IAPA. We'll all be there. It's the biggest uh, trade show for the industry. Thank you guys again. Um, you guys know how to reach out to Tent and Table. You have the phone number. I'll be putting this on YouTube as well if you're watching uh, this live. Uh, so check out the channel. And uh, you guys have a good rest of your evening. All right. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thank you. Bye.